Hey guys, you're the Heart 995 here. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, or if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Uh, so we're going to talk about voices today. Um, I've been playing this deck. I'm actually gone on doing book 10-0 with it. Uh, it's been pretty solid. Uh, before I even get into more of this, shout out to Rainer for sending me his deck list and for me to practice with it and to, you know, because I, I always figured this deck would be good, but it's never like the best deck. I always leave it about like T1 or T1.5, that's just my opinion. Um, yeah, let's jump into it. So I'm going to talk about the future of this deck too, guys, just letting you know. So let's talk about it. Uh, so two cards come out in the next set that's going to come out in about two weeks. So we've got Blessing of the Voices. So you can target one Voices card in your graveyard or banish or banish and uh, banishment. Is it banishment? Well, I don't know why it's called Banishment, but in the Banish, except for Breath of the Voices voice, add it to your hand. If a non-ritual monster is normal or special summon, you can ritual one warrior or dragon ritual monster from your hand by attributing monsters from your hand, based with ritualing summoning. And if the seeds are level, if you do, you cannot be destroyed by battle. So it has a battle protection too, which is pretty cool. I like that one. And then this one's pretty good. Uh, I saw a lot of people saying this card's not the greatest. I think this card's not too bad. I definitely think I would try out one just to see how it goes. But so this is uh, the Sephira uh, ritual version from the little Sephira. It's a big version of it. I think it's when it's turning into a big dragon here. <laughs> uh, so if you ritual something, you have Woe in the graveyard. You you can draw two cards and discard one. That's the uh, effect. Uh, when a attack is declaring involving a white ritual monster, warrior, or dragon, so pretty much if you can attack with like Skull Guardian or uh, Salavis, I would assume, just making sure I don't get that wrong. Yeah, just dragon or warrior. You can discard one random card from your opponent's hand, and that just happens. So just when you declare attack, you activate effect, they discard one random card, which is not too bad. It's good on the crap back. And then during your opponent's end phase, you can add one white monster from your graveyard to your hand. So on the end phase, you just add one. It's, it's actually not too bad. Um, do I think the deck gets more insane because of these two cards? Not really. I don't, I don't think the deck gets any more crazy. Uh, this card does help a little bit. Uh, this card's pretty good though. I, I do... I don't think it's like so good that it's going to change how this deck functions. I just think it's cool to have like you discard two and draw one. And sometimes it unbricks your hand or you can get hand traps from it that you feel like it's better than the dead cards in your hand. And the fact that it just adds like a white monster on the opponent's end phase, it's not too bad either. So you could even like, uh, I guess, uh, do they have a way to summon it? Maybe they don't. But I think this card's good. I, I like where voices are going. I feel like this deck's gonna always get like little support here and there, here and there. Uh, so you, I guess you guys can notice straight away I'm not playing Brand Infusion. Uh, I understand it's good. Uh, I'm not dissing anyone that plays Brand Infusion and Voices. I think it's solid for that version. I just, we just. I guess with uh, Rainer, shout out to him again, that we decided to do Hand Trap with Fenway instead because Fenway is just more, uh, just more versatile and like it goes into more Rogue. And you, you still got the Suspects, right? You still got Ash, you got Veil, you got Nib, you got Imperm. Uh, and then you got extra Hand Traps if you need it. Uh, again, you got the Hell Package. Nothing too crazy about this Voiceless list. I just wanted to try these two out. So if I wanted to try these two out, honestly, I probably honestly would take out one of this and I guess like maybe prep, but prep seems too good to not have. Maybe one nib uh, just to try them out and see if they're good or not. The problem, the, ultimately the problem with this deck is that I find it, it's too one dimensional. And that's why you play Brand Infusion, right? That's why you play Brand Infusion, so you can play your Fusion and your Rituals, because uh, it doesn't hurt you that much, right? But the problem is, 
when you do play Brand Fusion, you're kind of playing into another one-dimensional engine. And I know people make jargon, they can't play, but you're adding more bricks to an already bricky deck that does a lot that on its own. I don't think you need to jargon walk people. It's just my honest opinion here. Um, I think the deck can just do well with like hand trust behind and just sitting on like a couple in the gates or one to get and like a survivor to get you to target it. And if you have the like barrier up, they can only like, they can't even target any of your cards anyway. So honestly, I just don't f feel you need Brandon Fish. I could be wrong though. Like I just been playing this version of the deck. I've been enjoying it. Again, I want like 10 straight on Dueling Book. I guess whatever's for worth, I could be versing really bad players, but I just feel like this version of the deck's not too bad. I really like how they're going to get support each time it feels like. So I feel like it's a good hold if you want to buy this deck and think this deck's going to be good in the next format. I don't know it's going to be insane in the next format, but having the versatility of brand infusion, playing to the fusion version, and then you play or you play the normal like hand trap version, which I'm doing right now with, I guess, Fenway and Co. Um, I just think this deck's solid. Like, and the fact that you can dot a mono really free, this card's so good for voices. Oh my god, like, this card really helps. Uh, I haven't tried Drytron voices. I heard that's a version of a deck. I'm not really too keen on that. Not, if I wanted to play Drytron, to be honest, I'd just play pure Drytron or, like, some other just cyber angel stuff with drytron um little night just the extra deck's pretty standard like chaos angel bound for it, held for the you know for the other held and you got the acel synchron and you got entus obviously for the held uh you got the white charm because sometimes if you play a mirror match it's not too bad to make uh ip because it can make little nine dead turn little nine because little nine's insane Underworld Goddess, because it can out pearly, which is pretty good. Uh, Anima, just out any random, like, I guess if they put in the zone under the extra monster zone, you can just out it. Uh, dark, because Dark's just good against any Dark deck and gets Die Bell for free. Uh, Unchain Abomination, not too bad. It's actually pretty solid. Like, you can do a lot of things with it. Um, I actually kind of like this card. It won me a lot of games when I just made it. And just, uh, just having those pops... With the follow-up, it's, it's not too bad. And Typhon, because Typhon's just really good against a lot of decks. Especially against Branded. And that's probably like the main one. Uh, and then I play Mourner, because Mourner's good. Again, shout out to Ana. I'm going to keep shouting him out. Uh, Bell, because Bell's really good against some decks. It's also good against Mirror. Cosmic's just good against like Saint Eyes. Dark Lord, this is the only one I'm not not too happy about. It, it does okay. It's not the greatest card. Like, I know, like, Fenway and, like, with Woe or, like, a Diviner can, like, out of board while you have Dark War. But then you're having, like, multiple ways of doing that. And some structures really good. Like, this card just stops turn sometimes. But I feel like I would have replaced some strike for some of it, personally, if it doesn't get hit. But if it does get hit, I would just keep the strike in. Because strike does hurt a lot of decks. Um, this is just my, I guess, my little taste on Voiceless, if it's being T1 or not. I think it's a deck. I don't think it's T1 to, like, to a point where I should be siding heavily for a Voiceless player. I think this deck will be around. It will do well uh, from the analysis that I gathered. That it still tops regionals here and there and still does well in different other places in different countries. Uh, I think recently in, like, America, I think it got, like, fifth. And, like, in, like, South America or, like, I think maybe Central America got, like, top. It's, the deck's still good. It, it does what it does best. It reminds me of Ritual Alistar. Like, Alistar does Alistar's things. It fusion feels like Woe does Woe things and gets in your Skull Guardian. And you just can't do anything about it. There's the only difference between Alistar and this deck is you don't need to have a card in hand to negate with Mechaba. You just got a Skull Guardian the saying... It's 4,100 and saying you didn't omni negate. And you have a spell that can't target it for card effects. Like, it's, it's pretty broken to me. Having that kind of card. And it's a search of the deck. Pretty solid, honestly, guys. 
I just want to make a video on this. Um, I'm trying to get more videos like this. I, I want to engage with all different decks and I want to get better with every single different deck. That's why I took the time and effort to actually understand how this deck works, how it goes. I believe this card's so insane. Like, so effort does so much for this deck. Like, it, it's just one of the best cards. Woe and her is absolutely insane. Uh, Tira is so good with Held, like it just does so much, and also you can just like dodge like Veil and Imperm at points. Just a good card to have. Old Man Sage, not too bad. He's just really good as a one off. You get him when you need it. Sometimes he's a bit bricky, but he just does what he does. And this track card is just really good. This card's insane what it does. Destroy one, and then you can special summon one. You can only use each of the effects once per turn, but the fact that he has both is pretty pretty solid. And then you can mix Salavas in it. It's like I finally can bring my secrets out of my binder and actually play this card again. I, I really enjoyed this thing. I really enjoy what it does. Do I think it's got the power to be the greatest deck? I don't think so. I think it's I still rate it highly. I still rate it in the top at least the top eight or top seven. Like, I don't think it's... I don't know if it's top 5. Because there's a lot of new decks coming out. Especially post-Legacy of Destruction. Which is this video is based on. I could be wrong though. But what I think, guys. Is this deck's worth a play. So if you guys want to try this out. He's my deck with the voiceless. If you want to try it out. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Make sure you comment and let me know what... What your versions of voiceless. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And a wonderful evening. And thank you guys for listening to this video. Peace.